So in this video, I'm going to talk about the MOSFET Common Source Amplifier, or CS for short. Um, first of all, what is a common source amplifier? Uh, what, is this, what does this mean and why do we use it as, uh, as the terminology? Well, uh, the common source amplifier is going to look something like this most of the time. Um, you're going to have some input voltage you're going to have some output voltage and the three terminals of the transistors are connected with the drain up here, the gate here, and the source here. And we see because the source is grounded in this case, we say that it is common. So it is the common terminal. It's kind of annoying terminology, but it's sort of just something you got to you got to get used to. But now, why do we care? So why is this circuit important? Um, well, turns out this is probably one of the most important circuits in uh, all, of, uh, all of MOSFET land. And you'll typically have, I don't know, between three and four common source amplifiers in any given circuit. So in an op amp, in um, pretty much any given analog circuit, you're going to have common source amplifiers in oscillators. Uh, so many different things can be analyzed as a common source. So if you understand the common source well, you understand a good 50% of the circuit analysis that you'll ever need in analyzing MOSFET circuits, which are ubiquitous now in integrated circuits. So okay, uh, how do we analyze it and what do we want to know about this amplifier? Well, if we redraw it real quick, um, we said that we have an input voltage that we're applying. We have an output voltage. Uh, let's call this resistance RL just for standard, and it's a standard notation for load resistance. Um, well, we said previously that every amplifier can be characterized or can we can reduce to a Thevenin equivalent with some voltage gain, AV, some output resistance, R out, and so this is V out, and some input resistance R in. This is the voltage V in. So if we can characterize these three things, uh, R in, R out, and AV, then we have fully characterized this amplifier. And these three parameters also completely tell us how our circuit, how our circuit interacts with the world. So if we know these three numbers, then we know everything there is to know about this circuit here. So where do we begin? Well, when you're first analyzing these circuits, it's I find it's always helpful to draw out the small signal model. So we know the small signal model or the hybrid pi model of the transistor looks something like this. We've got a GM VGS, so this voltage dependent current source. Uh, we've got a VGS, is this voltage here. Uh, this is our gate terminal. This is our source terminal. And this is our drain terminal. And if we like, we can also draw in the output res or the uh, uh, RO, um, which I'm not going to do here just for. Uh, when you're initially analyzing things, it's helpful to keep things as simple as possible. So how do we translate this uh, this model into this circuit? Like where do we where do we attach stuff? How do we how do we plug things in? Um, well, this is the source right here, and this is the source. So all we need to do is ground the source terminal. Okay, uh, that's that's great. Um, this is the gate here. And you see that the gate isn't really connected to anything. Like uh, it's it's connected to V in, right? Like there's we apply V in to the gate, but it seems kind of strange that there isn't uh, like the gate is just floating there. And indeed, that's often the case because uh, this is just how MOSFETs are built. And I'm gonna draw V in um, just to be absolutely clear as a voltage source, like this. Uh, and let me just draw that up here as well. 
so that we know exactly how we are in fact applying this voltage. Okay, and what about the drain? Well, the drain is up here, and we see that the drain is connected to this RL transistor. So we can, uh, it doesn't really matter in what direction we draw the RL, but I'm gonna draw it down just because I'm running out of space, uh, RL. And now what is this RL connected to? So the other side is connected to VDD. So we might expect that, well, we just put a VDD here, but that's not what we do. Um, we're analyzing the small signal circuit. So we're analyzing, uh, and essentially when we analyze MOSFETs, we're almost always analyzing the small signal circuit. Um, so any constant voltage, so VDD, two volts, three volts, these do not change uh, with time. So these are constant. And any constant voltage, uh, if we're looking at its small signal changes, uh, small signal changes, oh, sorry, uh, small signal changes are zero. So we don't actually connect RL to VDD, we just connect it straight to ground. So if we re redraw this small signal model underneath, make it a little prettier, um, we see we've got our voltage source VN, which is connected to the gate. We've got our GM VGS, voltage dependent current source, and we've got RL. And this is the source terminal. And let me just draw the source terminal nice and nice and long so we can easily spot VGS. So this is the source terminal. And this is the drain terminal. And this is also uh, V out. So let's go about computing the three quantities. Uh, let's start with Rn. So Rn is just defined as if we apply some test voltage to the input, what's the test current that we get out of it? And so let's do that. Let's apply a test voltage to the input. So let's apply some test voltage V test. And what's the current flowing out of it? Well, this isn't connected to anything. Uh, like there's nowhere for this current to go. So the current has to be equal to zero. So Rn uh, is equal to some V test that we apply over zero, which is just infinity. So the input resistance of a common source amplifier is infinite. And this will actually turn out to be really, really useful because we want this to happen for a voltage amplifier. Um, and you'll, you'll see why in, in future videos. And so now let's calculate the gain, AV. Uh, and the gain is just defined as the output voltage divided by the input voltage. Now things are getting kind of messy up here, so let me just redraw this circuit down here. So GM, VGS, RL, and uh, I'm going to swap back in our input voltage, VN. So this is the gate. Sorry, that's the source, that's the gate. And this is V out or the drain. Okay, so what is the output voltage V out? And so I first like to look at things from just this part of the amplifier. Uh, so what's happening just over here to generate V out? Well, uh, we could use node analysis if we wanted to, but this is just a single branch circuit. So it's pretty simple. There's only one current flowing through this entire branch. And let's call that current I. Um, now what's the output voltage uh, as a function of I? Well, V out is just equal to, you see, we've, we've got uh, this current I flowing through this resistor. So there's a voltage drop, uh, I times RL across this voltage. And the initial voltage was zero. So zero minus I times RL or just minus I RL. That's cool. Uh, now what's I? Well, I is the same current that's flowing through this dependent current source. So that's just minus GM VGS times RL. Simple enough so far. 
but we don't want VGS in our answer. We wanted V out over V in. So now we need to figure out what is VGS as a function of V in. Well, VGS is just right here, right? So VGS is just the gate voltage minus the source voltage. And the gate voltage we see is just equal to V in because we're applying V into the gate. Uh, and the source voltage, well, the source is just grounded. So that's equal to zero. So VGS is just equal to V in. And so our final answer for V out is just negative GM times V in times RL. And now if we wanted to calculate AV, which we do, we just divide everything. So divide, well, that's a little, that's a little loose notation. Divide both sides by V in and the V ins on the right will cancel and we'll get negative GM times RL. And that's our answer. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to calculate R out. And this is probably the trickiest of the three to do, in my opinion, because of its definition. Um, R out is defined as some test voltage at the output divided by the test, the resulting test current but this is with V in equal to zero. So we need to short or ground our input voltage. So let's redraw the circuit uh, one more time just so we can do this final analysis. So we've got our V in gate, uh, we've got our source terminal, GM, VGS, RL, this is our output voltage and our drain. This is our source terminal. Now, if we want to calculate R out, first thing we do is set V in equal to zero. So this voltage source is just equal to zero, uh, or that's equivalent to just connecting a wire to the between the gate and the gate and ground, because zero volts plus ground is still just ground. Um, <clears throat> oh, and sorry, this is grounded as well. And so to calculate the output resistance, we need to apply some test voltage here, uh, V test at the output. And we want to know the resulting I test. Okay, uh, well, what, what's something interesting that we notice about this circuit? Before we do any formal analysis, um, we see that this voltage here, VGS, is equal to zero, right? Because the gate voltage is grounded the source is grounded, so VGS is equal to zero. And this means that this current source, this voltage dependent current source is gonna be off, like no current is gonna be flowing through it. So it's going to act like an open circuit. It's gonna act like nothing was there at all. So we can just erase it. And that's great because that hugely simplifies our analysis. And this will happen a lot when you're calculating the output resistance, um, which is why it's wonderfully convenient. Uh, so now we just need to figure out what is I test? Well, uh, all we have left, let's, let's clean up this circuit even more. All we have left on this side is a voltage source being applied across a resistor. And we know that the current apply the current resulting from a voltage applied to a resistor is just that voltage divided by the resistance value. And so, if we what we want uh, not is not I test, but we want the ratio V test over I test. So if we divide both sides, or if we multiply both sides by RL and divide by I test, uh, you'll see that. V test over I test is just equal to RL. And that's our output resistance. So that's our answer. And you'll see applying the definition was a little bit tricky and we had to, we had to recognize that we could remove this current source that was there. But after we did that, the computation was pretty trivial. So we've now fully analyzed our common source amplifier. If we wanted to draw its equivalent circuit model, we apply some input voltage to an infinite input resistance. That's multiplied by again minus GM RL times the input voltage. And then we've got some output resistance equal to RL. 
and this is our output. So this is the complete circuit model for the common source amplifier. Um, so I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.